Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMS at Pick Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 5, Questions 14 to 17. And in this unit, we're going to like to, uh, take a look at a ternary phase diagram. Uh, in, in this instance, they call it a pseudo ternary phase diagram. That's because an actual ternary phase diagram would go up to 100%, not 60%. But you probably would have seen this unit and been like, oh my God, what's going on here? Um, there's a lot of text. There's a very confusing looking figure. But um, you'd be happy to note that really you don't need to know anything from the text. What you really just need to take from the text is that region X is macro emulsion, region Z is micro emulsion, and region Y is nano emulsion. So in the exam, you'd kind of, draw this ternary phase diagram on your notes. I mean, now it is computerized, the GAMSAT, so um, they do give you paper to write on. So you draw it and just make sure you mark uh, the points or well, one, two, three, four, which we'll go through when we go through the questions. And just make sure you take note of how we analyze or how we uh, see the ternary phase diagram. So it's important to know to read the unit figure we have to consider each maximum point, in this instance, the 60% for, say, TPGS, or the 60% for tyloxapol, or 60% for doc sodium at the top of the pyramid. So then we have to draw lines parallel to the pyramid base, which is 0%. So we'll go through this now, and hopefully you get it the first time. Because once you get it the first time, you're going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't know... Um, uh, well, I guess you're going to be like, oh, well, I, I know I'm an expert now in ternary phase diagrams. So if I just get out my um, brush here, we'll start off with TPGS. So kind of, I would think about the ternary phase diagrams like a fidget spinner. You know, those very fun um, toys, I want to call them toys, those uh, apparatus you can just turn around and play around with all day. Um, just think of it that way. So we've got our TPGS. So let's start with TPGS. 60% is at the top, so we can draw a line, 60%. And can you see how at the bottom we have our 0%? And as we go up, it gets smaller towards the top of the pyramid, so we go up to 30%, 45 and then 60 So that's our TPGS. That's how we're going to read it. So we're going to read it as it shows in the figure. We're going to read it upwards. But if we now want to read Tiloxapol, remember what we said. So I'll change the color here to green. So for tiloxapol, remember, the base is going to be 0 and the top is going to be 60. So if that's our top and that's our base, we're going to go parallel to the triangle. So again, reorientate the triangle. So that's 0. That's going to be our 15. That's going to be our 30. I guess 45 here. And then 60. So just turn the triangle around because if TPGS is going that way, our tiloxapol is going to be going that way so just think of it that just think of it uh logically and just try to conceptualize it same thing now for doc na so we change our color to blue so doc na same thing we have our base up here we have our tip up here the 60 percent so just going parallel so we've got our 15 our 30 our 45 and then our 60. so it's going up this way so again, it's like flip the triangle around like a fidget spinner and you'll see that if you tilt your head, you're like, ah, it's going like that. So that's how to read it. So now if we take a look then at question one, it says the formulation represented at point one contains. So let me just draw point one here on this, um, on this diagram. So point one is somewhere in between 30, 45, 30, 30. So point one is around here. So this is what we should do. So let's just start off with our red first. So red, we're going to say, okay, if we're going up for red, it's going to be about in between 15, 30. So I'd say it's about, say, 17%. So let's get our green now for our tylopox. So our tyloxapol. So our tiloxapol is going to be, remember, the base is this way, and tiloxapol is going that way. So it's going to be somewhere between 15 and 30. And then finally, 
let's do our doc sodium or our doc na so remember the base is here so then um, we have to make sure that we're going if we look at the graph we're going this way so if that's the base tilt your head it's gonna go like that oh i completely missed it but you get the point it goes right through there so we can see therefore clearly that if we look at our red it's going to be somewhere between uh or i guess uh somewhere between 15 and 30 so it looks like our tpgs is about if we take a look at our options so 14 a b c d so c and d is incorrect so it's going to be between a and b because our tpgs is 21 percent. so yep it's about 21 percent. so tpgs is approximately 21 percent. so let's look now at our tiloxapole so we go across it's somewhere between 15 and 30 the options it's got to be 26 percent. so it's going to be tylo is 26 percent. so we know straight away that the answer has to be obviously a so 14 is a but let's just go through the last one our doc na so if we take a look the line is going through there so our doc na is about say just before 15 to so 13 percent So therefore, we know that our answer has to be A and it can't be B. So again, it's just take a look at the ternary phase diagram. Draw, be systematic here. Remember, our TPGS is going up. Our tiloxapole is going across. Our doc NA is going this way. And just draw the lines in the direction and you'll get your answer. So the answer for 14 is A. It's the same principle now for 15. So if I just clear the screen here. So let's take a look at 15 now. So 15 says formulation P contains 15% tiloxapol and formulation Q contains 30% tiloxapol. Which of the following is true? So let's just draw the lines then. Tiloxapol, remember, tiloxapol, get green out. It's going across like this. So let's draw the line across 15%. So 15% is going to be there. And let's draw the line across 30%. So you know straight away that your which of the following is going to be true. So for P and Q, they're both obviously going to be um, either a micro or a nano emulsion. So if we look at the options, we have 15A says P must be micro emulsion and Q must be macro emulsion. That's not true because none of the lines cross through macro. So A is incorrect. B, P must be a macro emulsion. Okay, so macro emulsion, yes, no, sorry, there's no line going from macro emulsion, so B is incorrect. C, both P and Q could be micro emulsions, that's true, so that's, we'll put a tick here and we'll see D. Both P and Q can be macro emulsions, no, they are not crossing the macro, so the answer therefore has to be C. So now if we move on to question 16. Again, same principle. So I guess the hard, the tricky bit about this unit was just trying to understand um, how to read a ternary phase diagram. Once you understand how to read it, the questions are pretty streamlined and straightforward. So the next question says, question 16, formulations containing at least 40% doc NA can only be. So let's draw it. So doc NA, let's get the blue out. So 40%, remember if it's going parallel, so 40% is going to be about, hopefully I can draw this correctly, 40%. So it's about 40% if we're drawing a parallel, remember, from zero the base and the dock is at the top. So it's got to be a macro emulsion. So you know straight away. So formulations containing at least 40% dock NA, so at least, which means all the ones going across this way. So they're all going to be macro emulsions. So the answer for 16 has to be B because you can see it's crossing macro, not nano and not micro. So again, what I said at the beginning, it's important that you just label the X, Y, Z with either macro, micro, and nano, and that's in the last paragraph of the unit stimulus. So um, again, you only need to know like one sentence from the unit stimulus to help you. So 16 is going to be B. Now finally, question 17. 
Which of the following is the closest to maximum proportion of doc NA in the formulation that could form a microemulsion? So if we take a look at doc NA, so if we look here, so doc NA, I mean, same one. So it's asking you which of the following is closest to the maximum proportion of doc NA in the formulation that can form a microemulsion. So we want to know which is the, at which point is the last point we can produce a microemulsion. So that's what we need to deduce. So obviously it's going to be, because if it's doc NA, it goes parallel, remember? So it's going to go across like that. Sorry, my lines are very poor, but we have to draw it so that it's the last tinge before we can get a micro. So it's obviously going to be that bit. So it has to be somewhere around 30% because that's the last bit where, you, where you're going to get a micro emulsion. And then after that, anything after that, you're going to end up with macro and nano. So the answer for 17 has to therefore be B. So reading, I guess the trick in this unit was understanding how to read a ternary phase diagram. Um, once you just uh, be systematic here, take a look at the top. So the 60% is 0%. Draw a triangle. Remember, you're going parallel. So it's from the base upwards. And then you can just, like a fidget spinner, tilt the triangle around for the next formulation and then tilt it for the next formulation or uh, the, the next component. Um, so... Just, just make sure that you, you in the exam, I know you don't have much time, but um, the easiest way to answer these questions if you obviously had prior knowledge in ternary phase diagrams, but if you don't, just take a good look at the um, axes and you should be fine. If you do have any more questions about this unit, you can post them in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.